So anyway, bro, this video is embarrassing. Bro, you can't even do a skeleton in your clan bag. Say, your points are invalid. Doesn't make me. Hold on, hold on. Let's talk about my credentials, shall we? At approximately 6 p.m. on June the 20th, 2024, Shadow Near Tree released, and my soul was stolen. It has been stolen for the last. About how many days has it been? I've been playing this game nonstop. I must say, grief, you know, was meant to celebrate the love of my life, graduating and getting a bachelor's degree. Every other moment has been solely devoted to grinding this shit the fuck out. Now, to be clear, uh, I'm no, I played it all the way back in when it released. I'm just now booted up. I've got a level 600. Four character? Cost me, what, five and a half million ruins to level up? I beat Bloodborne, Dark Souls 3, Dark Souls 1, beat every single boss, hidden or otherwise, and all of them. And enjoy it every second of it. I'm also an MMO player. I play specifically, I put cut my teeth for a very long time in the PvP section of oh, Scrolls Online. Oh, to remind me of my MMO choice. Uh, this is where all the sweat lords and people who are into PvP and want to do it hang out. I enjoy it. In fact, you want to see my favorite mode of PvP in? Elder Scrolls Online? Yeah, this. This hellscape. You know, why am I telling you about all this? Functionally, at the end of the day, this is just a dark and darker video. Me, talk, me responding to all the allegations of scrub, get good, gear fear, you're bad, shut the fuck up. Just, and finding a handful of reasonable gems with it. Uh... Generally, the shitty comment section. Well, the reason I bring it up is primarily this shit here. This is a map that has a currency called Telvar that you can use to buy collectibles that pump you much money, uh, very powerful pieces of gear, and collectibles that you can sell in the game's market for a shit ton of gold. The way it works is you collect Telvar by fighting and killing things within the world, the NPC, the PvE aspect of it, and there's also and you get a higher generation of this currency when you control the district you're playing. And, and there's three factions, so three groups are trying to take these districts while you go. And if somebody kills you, they when you die when an NPC kills you, you lose half your Telvar. If a person kills you, they get to keep a quarter of the half you lost. So there's an incentive for you to kill as many as possible. It's a P V P V E mode. And this is my favorite mode in the game. I'm both in a PvP context and probably within a PvE context. And I love the risk and I love the reward. And I love you know the the uh, feeling of adrenaline of going in, grabbing my shit, getting out and, and making my way back to base, either through the teleportation stone that gives you back to your home base, or making the journey back uh, safely. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? And so we're here, with Dark and Dark. In my last video, by which, so, 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 so many people missing the entire point of this video. Fundamentally, I know I'm not good at this game. There's a reason I put my own gameplay underneath it. And I said as much in my video, obviously. Of course, when people are passionate about things that people have criticisms of, you know, they tend to go all monkey, monkey, wolverine, and not actually fucking listen to think, which is what happened in a lot of cases here. Functionally, at the end of the day, my criticisms of Dark and Darker are this. The progression is the gear. You don't get the gear 
by risking the gear you, you don't get better gear by risking the gear you have and that's the gameplay loop there's no amount of upgrades you can do to your character to get better the progression path is the gear and you know what that's okay like that's fine ultimately and this is the reason why i won't probably stick with the game long term but i do stick with Elder scrolls a lot the televar that i gain in the imperial city in this i referencing are ultimately something i can use in other aspects of the game can't use the Telvar outside of the designated merchants there in the zone, but you know what I can use them for? I can use it for, you know, polymorphs that completely change how your character looks and sell them on the market, get some extra gold, buy some new gear, I can do that. Or I can get, you know, use it to buy unique, powerful sets of gear using that are only available through Telvar. There are aspects, it is and the ultimate crux of my um, complaint with extraction-based games is the entire purpose of an extraction-based game is it feels like a supplemental was turned into an entire game. DMZ and Warzone, I have a little bit of an issue with. Granted, I'm not a Call of Duty guy. I find Activision Blizzard to be in a foreign company for me. Did y'all forget about shit like this? Because I didn't. Ultimately, the things done and the things said in this video were in service to kind of that, the point of extraction games not having a super rewarding feeling for me. You know, at the end of the day, I said that I enjoy the actual gameplay and combat and the systems. I like the clunk features. It reminds me of Oblivion. It, it, uh, I like the looting, like I said, it reminds me of Diablo. It has a lot of things that I like. And I said that there were um, things missing, I felt like, from this game that I feel, if they were present, would be able to retain that person. I have, um, I have been sweaty in video games in the past. I have been a tryhard in many video games. But as much as, um, if we're being honest, they're, 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 the, the, the style of progression on how, and on how you get good at the game is not easy. Nobody guided me. I saw the game. I liked the way the gameplay looked. I bought it back in August last year or something, played a little bit of it, came back to it after I all the things set done, and I enjoyed myself playing it still, even, you know, I'm kicking my ass, I'm trying to see the PCs are kicking my ass, the mobs and stuff, you know, at the end of the day, I've only have clocked about, I guess, maybe eight hours, ten hours, most max in this game, you know, there's a reason I'm in the year score level 24 areas, you know, not good at the game. I never pretended to be. And my criticisms fundamentally come from two places. One, uh, a lack of new player onboarding, which you know, I didn't articulate as much in that video. I was more of my, the second thing, my opinion of, I don't feel like extraction games don't have a, they don't have a lot of substance outside, outside of, you know, the progression. And you know, if you're somebody who enjoys that progression system, that's perfectly fine. More power to you. I don't think that's a bad thing. But what I do think is the bad thing is this kind of community, I guess. I don't know. I it sours. It's sad. It, I did. I, I was originally sour because it seems all the sweat lords found the original video, but I saw some really great comments from folks who had some pretty insightful, if not criticism, things to say. Such as this comment here. It's an extraction game. Losing kits and gaining kits is the substance. The risk adds the excitement. The bosses are high risk, high reward. That's how the game works. Yes, some people may not like it, and truly, no disrespect to you if you don't like that aspect, which a lot of us do, since it is the substance. Play something else. And then he proceeds to say, 
Uh, but that's why MMORPGs exist. It seems more your speed. You know what? And he clocked me, and I'll give him credit for that. I think the overarching thing for me is I genuinely enjoy the systems in this game. And it's frustrating to me to enjoy these systems as much and not get the substance out of that out of that combat. And that ultimately was my uh, the point of that video. I was talking ultimately how I think I mean that extraction based games don't have any sub don't feel they they do genuinely feel like a they should have been a supplemental one rather than a game. And at the case of sounding a little rambling here, I don't feel like it is good games. I'm not saying that it can't be enjoyed. I'm not saying that people can't like it. God knows I like I like the feel of the game itself, and I love the exhilaration I feel while playing. I just had a hard time putting the emotional investment on when something when I had been working hard, grinding for hours, getting uh, uncommon gear and rare gear and rollers and getting epic and legendary loot, and then all of that can be whisked away in a moment. It's rough. And I understand that that's part of the game. And it's, But, ultimately, I think that this type of game is for a niche audience that certainly enjoys it, but I don't think it's good game design in, in the sense of there are many what Eastern like Korean MMOs that as a punish mechanic of you dying will remove experience gain through leveling. Uh, this is a mechanic that I experienced back when I was a kid. I was trying to play a bunch of MMOs and I didn't have parents that were they could afford to, they just didn't respect video games in the slightest, so they didn't want they did they, they didn't want to spend they barely wanted to spend money on a, the new Pokemon game, let alone, you know, a, a monthly subscription to Wizard 101. Um which is a great MMO, by the way. I, for those who are watching this, you know, mad as shit because I all I'm saying extraction games are kind of mid. Uh it's a it's a uh, MMO card game builder. It's fun. And it's still around if you guys uh, the from the question. It's a good give a shot. Ultimately I feel like the uh ultimately I feel that extract these uh extractive based games are um and ultimately uh, ultimately, you know I these the the me me mechanics of losing progress and having your progression be lost like that is a rush, but I remember playing Diablo, the Diablo 2 remaster, and it, I remember dying, losing all of my gear, and I just haven't touched it since. You can say I'm bad at the game, you can say, and you can say that you know, uh, it's gear fear, or you can say all of these things, but you know what, you're probably right. I am bad at the game. I don't think it's a fucking rewarding experience to play for about four or five hours, uh, finally extract, save your gear, uh, decide, all right, I'm gonna run, uh, all of this uncommon gear I found, uh, get murked by a player or a frost troll, frost giant, and then it's gone. I get that's part of the game, and I get that it's the sub you you say it's the substance, but I I genuinely, you know, when I sit down and think about what am I doing in this game, what am I working towards? I'm working towards being able to be less likely to die immediately. Um, 
just to break it down, this down into uh, yeah, final thoughts here as we're approaching the 15 minute mark on this as we, as I meander autistically 20 miles away from the point, this is the point where I kick you out of the van and make you walk back. Um, I have about four criticisms, not of dark and dark, but of the extraction of the, of the extraction job, extraction based games. I'll probably do one of these about battle reps too. First, uh, especially toughest nails ones like darker and darker. The onboarding experience for new players is dog shit. Unless you have Reddit pulled up, or YouTube videos, or your friends in Discord, you are going to struggle and not have a good time. Now, granted. I am a bit of a nerd, so I picked up the, I picked up a, I tried a bunch of different classes. I found that the warlock for me, and I kind of liked its, uh, drink. it's 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 risk versus reward place. I found that enjoyable, and I was kind of figure it out. Now I just have to learn how to do it. So that's the first one. Very unfriendly to new players, too. The progression of the the only real substantive progression being the gear you extract with is the gear that matters. And that progression being lost feels punishable. Now I understand that that is the point for many of you, you fucking masochists, but that doesn't, but just because you enjoy it and, it, and you think and you, and you enjoy that type of gameplay does not make it popular. An example of why it would be is the following. Now, most of the people watching this who are here for Dark and Darker probably don't know what this is. This was the survival mode for Fallout 76, of which I played a shit ton. Of. Yes, I know I just validated every negative opinion you have for playing that. But, you know, what it just, just, just to keep y'all on your toes, you know what Fallout 76 has that y'all don't? A friendly community. I try to set a friendly community just in case my bike can This mode was some dog water. I loved it. The whole premise was is that what you would extract out of by leaving the game, and when you go into it, the number of eight items that went when you die, instead of just dropping your junk, you would also drop um I think it's like 20 to 30 percent of whatever eight items you're carrying. That's stim packs, that's buffs, that's uh, drugs, that's all manner of things that are, yes, useful for you to use, but are more importantly valuable. And a great way of generating caps was going into survival mode, killing a bunch of people by spawn, by, by if not spawn camping, then by certainly, which certain gangs will also do because that's what it eventually evolved into, and going out and fighting people. Because when you would fight and kill people in PvP, in PvP you would get a chunk of a certain amount of caps from their inventory. Sound familiar? Ultimately, the mode was disposed of. Just not enough people were playing it. People didn't enjoy it. And it went away. I miss it. I miss the PvP element of this game. But, you know, ultimately, just the PvP aspect of it, and the, and the, and the, as much as joy as I got from the adrenaline rush of playing it, it just was not awesome. It just people, the community just didn't jive with it. Same thing happened to the battle royale mode that they added, Nuclear Winter, which was the only battle royale game that I got in any semblance of joy from playing. Brings me to my third point. This shit just ain't good at retaining people broadly. Don't get me wrong, I genuinely do like the adrenaline rush you get from the extractions. It's just, I'm. I don't know, I just. There are so many other games in my life that I am working, playing, and working in. That getting a fulfillment out of that, being able to lose hours of progress just because I zinged when I should have zagged, you know, doesn't feel good. 
it doesn't matter whether I'm good or bad or whether or whether or not you believe wrongly, I might add that that's the substance of the game. I I mean, even for y'all adrenal junkies, I'm a reformed one. God knows I get something off of shit, but I've had sex and I've touched grass. That one was kind of mean and uncalled for. I'm a little salty of, of people being fuckheads in my comment section. I'm being perfectly honest. Commenting under each of their bullshit, probably productive. And the fourth and last thing is, is that there needs to be something more. Like, there needs to be a point to actually playing the extraction game. There is a new point. The point is, at present, to just get more shit, let it hang in your stash until you want to eat you feel confident enough to go use it. You go use it, hope you don't fuck up, or get fucked up, and then you get better loot, and then go back, rinse, repeat. Part of the reason why I think I enjoyed DMZ that was because ultimately the things that I was doing in DMZ, the achievements, the levels up, the gear, and all that stuff, the progression I was getting there was tied to progression in spots. Whether I'm knocking out strongholds in DMZ, or I'm getting my shit pushed in this godforsaken path, it all feeds into the progression widely. And I think that's kind of my biggest issue with our talk specifically. When I was playing ESO, you know, in the bad place, or whether I'm causing shenanigans in the function Bible mode of Fallen 76, ultimately there's something being worked towards broadly in a macro sense. And that's fun. This is something that I'm going to play occasionally, enjoy nominally, because I like the magic system, I like Warlock class a lot. Um, I do love the adrenaline rush of it all, but fundamentally there are better places where I can both get that adrenaline rush, maybe not as good as Dark and Dark, but certainly ways that will allow me to some kind of progression that can be um, swiped away by some 1700 hour sweat lord. And ultimately, I wanted to respond to uh, all this shit. I don't know if somebody posted my shit on Reddit or something, but it just seems like a lot of motherfuckers not talking. Some are cool. This guy specifically just was completely out the I I like I'm not saying I'm not saying that my opinions are uh you know in line with the community here. They're obviously not. I think I'm objectively correct, but I don't think the combat's bad, if I'm being perfectly honest. I think it's clunky, but that's part of the charm. And uh People like Valonex, oh, here, didn't fuck you, didn't seem to fucking watch the video. But I digress. I think, my, I think I do want to take a second as we wrap this video up to talk about this particular comment here from Bloodborne. He made a couple of comments on, on this video, and I replied saying, don't worry, I'll make the follow-up. This comment will definitely make the video of some things I have fucked on that I think you can come up with And I wanted to be a man here. Number one. To be honest, I'm not so sure about the soul binding gear, but I do feel that a reasonable alternative would be on the practice mode where you can bring gear and try the new control setting without fear of losing it if you're trying to figure out how things work. Again, quick criticism I have difficulty starting the game as a player. Having a count instance is probably going to add a lot of different time for the devs for a marginal player experience, but having a practice arena and lobby would be a godsend just for the practice game. Contested builds, and you know what? It probably would be a lot of time, to but yeah, ultimately, at the end of the day, this is the game, and I don't think I said this in the video it's clearly enough. This game is one of the handful of you know, first person action games I've played that feels like I'm playing you know, on level one, two, maybe three player level character in DD. 
lovely. Otterkin is a very minor mint pick for me. There are players who buy off new gears off the market every time we go to wipe, and I think that's how you're going to play by the devs. That's fair. You know, I could probably grind on it, but I'll ultimately play it again. I don't think the ultimate, I don't think progression being tied to uh, being able to have, lose hours and hours and hours while, while being, having to lose hours and hours and hours of progress is, um, is certainly a, you know, a, it adds a level of adrenaline to the game. I, again, that doesn't mean it's good game design. Dropping half loot sounds interesting, but a lot of details will need to be worked out, like drop the most valuable items first. Gear, rare loots, also a lot of PvP purists will give you shit for this. I don't give a shit about being spun. I'm I play Elder Scrolls on I played Elder Scrolls online for PvP for a very long time. There's one thing I am used to as developers not giving a fuck in community, not giving a fuck about the PvP. I we, we, PvP people and I include I include my past self in this are are at the are are the are the taint of uh, most communities that are generally terrible human beings. And I included myself in that because I had a person who was before I met my current partner, I was literally in the middle of a booty call and I would rather um try and go for Emperor all gas no brakes instead of like have sex with her. So I'm, you know, I was, I was very much, you know, needing to touch grass. If there's purely a co-op mode in any shape or form, I would upgrade my account to legendary mode instantly. Purely PvP games always need to sell out by having toxic veterans or hardcore players who basically gave me casuals and replenish for the game. No kidding! My comment section reflects this last fifth point here. You can probably see it from the replies near vid on how prevalent this small PP energy community. I completely agree. Bloodborne gets a gold fucking star. I'll just leave the rest of you who have somehow been able to stay for this 27 minute meander session as I am talking out of my ass at 3 o'clock in the morning. You know, I did plan on writing a script for this. I did plan it. And Shane. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for watching. We appreciate you, your time, and your viewership. If you want to support the show, you can do so by going to himedia.gg slash donate. Here you can uh yeah. fuck. Here you can support the show and everything we do. It uh dollar counts. A dollar a month is a boon to my mental health. I am very poor. You can also join our Discord. Links can be found at, at, at again, at hnmedia.gg slash Discord. No. So very much for watching. I appreciate you, your time, and your viewership. And I will see you guys next time. Ah, the comments are going to be fun. Then.